The drum kit is pop music's most important instrument. German composer Enno Pop, who grew up without pop music, has a fascination for percussion, and certainly the drum kit. This year's November music features a new work of his, Strake. Composed for ten drums, Vibrand Shop of the Cultural Press Agency asks Enno Popa about the background to this work. Classical music composer, what's your link to drum sets? Um, I write for drum sets for, I think, 20 years now. It's just kind of, you know, there's something what the musicians start practicing this as from their childhood, like, or when they are just uh, teenagers, all, you know, all the classical players that started playing in bands and whatever. So they're really able to do it. They have these skills. And it's really great just to take like musicians who absolutely like they know later they you just get a bit bored playing in bands because there's <laughs> so, so many more interesting things to do with percussion, but just bringing this back and I found it's just very fascinating. So this was just a very long dream of me just to take this this instrument. The drum set, what comes from a completely different sphere and a different world and different style of music and uh, do something with it what is completely like something else. So like like Helmut Lachemann takes the violin and do something else, you know. So I think it's just good to take something what is there. I take, I have all this, uh, you know, um, what is around the drum set, the expectations, and everybody knows things about the drum set. You have a sound in your head. And I think there's something I can work with. I can play with that. So, and I can do something else. So I don't have to fulfill the expectations, but I can just play with that. Yeah, because you're using 10 drum sets. Um, and are, are, are they all uh, professional drummers? I mean, because you're, are you writing? For them, really, in 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 the notes, because I think that's very hard for drummers in bands. Yeah, look, look, yeah, sure. Um, look, all the players are really drum set players. They have studied that. They know how to do it. Mm -hmm. But they are also like contemporary music players. That means they are able to write, they really read complete complex scores and play complex stuff together. Like normally, um, like a band drum set player would not be able or not, it was not necessary to read notes and read like music from sheet because it's like improvised and that's interesting because I think the most of the traditional or whatever like drum set music is improvised and I, it changed completely the mind when you start uh, composing for these instruments and what is just interesting about the uh, multiplication of in, the amount of instruments so I have not one but ten inst ten it's and that that kind of things happening what you don't really don't expect for example melodies like when we have 30 symbols like everybody has three symbols we have 30 symbols that's making it able to play really melodies with the <laughs> symbols and playing chords with the symbols you can play melodies with the kick drums you know we have 10 different kick drums of different all the drums have kind of a pitch so that different pitches are make it able to play really pitches melodies so um i think for my, me uh, i don't miss anything you know for <laughs> when i started uh, the writing the piece i thought this will be really difficult because there are no melodies and there are no chords in it and there are no pitches only drums for one hour but in fact, because there's so many different drums, it's really very interesting because this musical uh, stuff is coming back through just having the, all these instruments. Um, it was a kind of, you know, in the piece, everything is really fixed. So I know every, there's no improvisation at all in this piece. Okay. But what is kind of uh, what I really did not 
fix in advance is where the the shape of the melody that means which player has the biggest instrument for example which player has the biggest snare drum i just told the the players bring your best instrument bring your be most be or the instrument you love most i know my players have different snare drums we could have had like 20 snare drums and so we decided not to touch it. They just bring the snare drums and one is a bit higher, one is a bit lower. You can tune the drums, that is possible. But at the end, it's just about the sound itself has to be really good and the drum set itself has to be characteristic. What means that at the end, uh, you can hear kind of, I don't like the word polyphony, but you can follow each of the player. That's hard in the recording. So if you just listen to the piece on YouTube, you have no idea because all drums that sound completely the same. But if you sit in the hall and you see the players playing and you have the sound which is kind of in, in the space, you can absolutely follow each instrument because each drum set sounds completely different. And that was for me very interesting. This depends on the one hand, on the instruments, but on the other hand, also on the players themselves. I think the players have just different bodies that they move in a different way, and that makes it sounds different. The way they groove is completely different, and I really like that. Yeah, because uh, also the the the, the spatial um, circumstances are 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 uh, special. I mean, you place the audience in the middle of the. Of the of the audio of the hall, no, the drums no, are we don't. No, okay, no, that's no. not true. Uh, we play, play have all the drum sets on stage. Okay, it's so not, I, I was the public thinking is not that... in the middle. Okay, I was thinking because we had yeah. we had this show with uh, eighty pianos uh, in the Holland yeah. Festival uh, this year. So, so I think but... for the future we think about trying that, but mm. just for the world premiere that was uh, two weeks ago. It was too dangerous because the musicians have really to get in in touch with that. They play this without a click track. They don't have a conductor. They just play with eye and uh, or like ear contact. Okay. And uh, so far, it's not possible. So if they know the piece even better, they feel really safe with the piece. I think we can in the future do uh, uh, percussion around the public, but I'm not sure if that's better. I don't know. Uh -huh. We'll see. We have to try this. Right? Yeah, I guess because well, the 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 the, the, uh, the around would have problems because when you're too much on your own side as audience, you don't get the right surround sound. I think. Yeah, the I think side. the biggest problem is that some listeners sit very near to one no. of the ten, so there's no balance anymore. You hear just you sit at the number seven, and you hear the number seven always yeah. the loudest. And that's not good. It's not helping the the piece. Yeah. Um, now I think it's uh, for for Gus, our, our audience is is not really very uh, specialized into uh, modern classical music. So I'm trying to be a bit more uh, uh, profane, if you would yeah. like to say. <laughs> yeah. um, but but uh, 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 having uh, drums sets on stage. I mean, w w what's your own background? Are you from a band background in? To say that before you were a composer no no i don't have any band background um i have a really classical music background and for a long time i really so like when i was a teenager i didn't do any pop uh, jazz music really and still i don't do pop or jazz music so what i do with the drum sets is absolutely no pop and jazz music it's just an it's just a sound what's just there so i'm just I'm super curious in music and I have all this, I'm listening to lots of music that different, absolutely most different styles possible. Um, for sure, there's always drum sets, you know, and um, I thought it's just interesting to isolate that. And what is interesting, like if you hear the old, like old jazz improvisations and sometimes just there's a drum set solo, which in the beginning is absolutely fantastic and fascinating. But after one minute, it gets like a bit boring and you're waiting for the, the band getting in again or the saxophone or you want more pitches. And I thought, why is that? Why is that? And what is the, what is wrong about the percussion mm. solos? And what, how could you, to make this more interesting. And maybe this is the moment 
where a composer is needed. So for sure, there's all this, what I said already, there's so much improvisation on percussion solo. I can't, I can't write everything, you know, of people mm -hmm. improvising, and, and it's just a completely different approach. But about like an hour piece, I think it's really complete with 10 people. You need a composer. You can't improvise. You could never improvise. No. No, that, that, I think that would be complete chaos. I mean, yeah. this could be interesting too. But, yeah. uh, but, so I, I find it quite interesting that you had had an, an upbringing without any um, popular music. I mean, <laughs> how did you manage? Where, 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 where did you grow up? Where did I grow up? On the I did grow up. How on did the... you grow? <laughs> how did you grow up? Also, I mean. Because I think for normal, I mean, you're from 69. Uh, yeah. There was pop music all around. Um, it's hard yeah, to grow well. up without it. <laughs> now, I'm from the countryside and I just was completely into music all the time. I really loved music and I loved uh, playing the piano and did everything like uh, choir singing and making chamber music and stuff and uh, and I started composing very early, so I started, okay. I think, at ten years old. And there was like in the in the radio in the seventies and eighties, there was so much contemporary music in the radio all the time, like Stockhausen speaking about his music on a Tuesday at four o'clock in the afternoon. You can't imagine, you know, now the country. No. And radio is always in the night when everybody is sleeping. I don't know. And at that time, they had really so much contemporary music. And that was just great. So I just got uh, a lot of diff very, very different things. I always listened to the music from non-European culture uh, stuff, the ancient music. And I got, I think I got most of my musical influence from when I was growing up from the radio, because there was everything. Hey, that's that's interesting. I mean, the the, the that's it was a, a very special youth, and I think yeah. So and and then starting to write music. I mean, composing is also uh, a lot of it's going on in your head. You have to make the music sound in your head because you can't play everything. Uh, uh, how, how does it work for for a ten year old kid? Um, I don't know exactly. So I started. In fact, I think the first pieces I wrote were hardcore avant-garde music, so I had no idea how it sounds. I just like you, John Cage, you know, that's from 12, 11, 12 years old. It's easy to, it's easy to uh, adapt or to uh, imitate because you just don't know, put dots on paper. And at a special certain point, I thought this is uh, not the, the way I'm interested in. And I started to do really lots of very classical stuff. You know, like when I was practicing like sonatas and stuff, I like Bartok, Mikrokosmos uh, things, and I just tried to compose like that. So there were some pieces which were re really near to Stravinsky, Prokofiev and so on. And I just got from step to step, I got a bit more experience. And I think the most interesting is that I really loved uh, I loved reading scores and mm -hmm. I think that's I think it's really super important is more that you get so I'm in touch with scores and I just know how it sounds so it's get it's not only about writing it's just having it the score this is like music writing is like another kind of writing you know like the Chinese alphabet if you don't know anything about it it seems completely unpredictable or uh incomprehensible and uh i'm just uh, i just read scores from from that time so uh, i started maybe with 10 11 years old being interested in scores so this is just possible and i just think this is the most important thing so uh, i was at that time because that was so important for me not that much interested in improvised music this this came later because i thought it's really that the uh the writing of music or this relationship between the written music with the sound, this is something really very special in in, uh, in uh, Occidental music. Yeah. So you, you went to uh, Berlin to a very prestigious uh, school, uh, music uh, conservatory. Um, 
I think it's called in English. I don't know. Um, well, the, the, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I, I, I wonder because I heard some pieces of you uh, online, uh, uh, which were also uh, I, I love them very much. Um, but also, they, they they have a bit of a learning curve, I think, for people who are not used to to this music. Because, and that's also what you're using in this drum set piece: um, very small uh, uh, intervals between notes. I mean, uh, uh, really half half of half a note, uh, uh, of half a tone uh, difference, which gives a very uh, um, special sound. I mean, how how did you? Develop this because um, it, it, it's also well. How, how is is it? It's a common practice, maybe on modern contemporary music. But how you you have developed a special style in it? I think. Yeah, I don't like the word style, but I like the word. <laughs> uh, I just like the word uh, the technique. So I I thought okay. um, it's not really common, but I, as for me, it was really important to know about the atoms like the smallest uh, units in the music so i really got nearer and nearer i felt like i'm really tight like in a laboratorium and take a microscope and go into the music and to find what could be the atom or maybe a cell so and i if i work with these kind of cells i just it's not about only about the cells but about the growth so to the, I just, uh, it's kind of a research how musical material, whatever it is, um, can develop, starting from a really very easy point there. I just wrote lots of pieces which start at uh, very simple beginnings, like so for maybe for to the public to show something that we start here. So I get you, you are not... Uh, your friends and I show you something what I've found. So this is a very easy beginning. And I'm interested in the process. It's not interested in the easiness. I'm interested in the process that things are developing. And for sure, things can develop to uh, infinite, dif in, infinite different ways. So for example, in this drum set piece, I just start again and again. So I start very simple with just all two together playing one beat and the beats are starting to develop to something and the normal way how nature is like uh, trees are growing and getting bigger and bigger but they got not getting smaller again you know so mm -hmm. this is just one the normal process would be that things are getting even more com more and more complex so to just to keep it interesting as a music i just choose the way in this that drum set piece that I start again, so I have the first growth and then I start in another point and let it even more grow and then start again. And there's the next, like maybe the first year, second year, third year, like the hmm. like you know, in the um, a like garden cycle or whatever. And yeah. um, I think this is uh, this is the important way. So I would really not say this is a style, but it's a work, it's just a kind of uh perception on the kind of how i uh how i do work with uh, with elements but the the elements themselves could be completely different so some pieces really have extremely simple elements like the uh, single beat in this percussion piece um but other pieces just start with something what is more more complex and but this can also like uh, big cell this can be just repeated or changed or whatever but i think it's i really like uh, to make the music like you can follow you know i think the following this is a communication process i like to have my public uh, i do not lose my public you know mm -hmm. i want to show something i want to communicate I want to keep uh, stay in touch with people who are sitting in the concert and listen to me. So I think these processes are really very helpful in case of the communication and to be uh, keep things interesting. And for sure, um, you never know when you start composing a piece with whatever you take for the beginning. You never know 
where it will land. You know, I just can't think okay. about the landing, but there are lots of things happening during the process of the composing. And that's just uh, very interesting and always uh, full of surprises for myself. So, uh, you, you, you get a, a commission to, to, to write a piece for this and that instruments and make it last an hour or how, 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 how do you go about it then um yeah like, look uh, concerning this piece i just uh was asked by Dono Ischinger festspiel uh music Tage, what would you like to do and i said i want to write this piece one hour long piece for 10 drum sets and they said okay let's go for it so that was really not very complicated <laughs> okay. especially yeah. because they're really great partners like the november music and huddersfield festival essen and more uh, more partners, Wien Modern, uh, who immediately said, we want to contribute and we will do that. We are interested in this project. So this was really, really nice. So for sure, there are lots of some different ways of how a piece is. Uh, sometimes you just need to talk more and to discuss and whatever is the length and, what is, and so on. But I think it's good to, uh, I'm a really... Uh, lucky uh, person that I can, uh, I'm quite free in how, to, how I will write the piece. Yeah. As, as has always been, I mean, what was the, the big breakthrough for you? Because there's always a moment in a career that you gain some kind of freedom. I mean, this is... Uh... Yeah, I think there was uh, the piece Knochen, what was a performance by Ensemble Modern in 2000. They had this commission for the 20th birthday of Ensemble Moderne, that's a long time ago, and uh, that I was 30 years old, and they had, a, at that time, a very great manager. He said, when you invite the Ensemble Moderne, we bring our young composers. And he was always, like, super, he just, I think they played the piece 14 times in different countries, and in Holland, in Belgium, and in, Bel in France, and wherever they went, they played my piece, and that was absolutely fantastic. So it's still, I think today, I would, I don't know, any manager of an ensemble who would act like this, but mm -hmm. this was a total, uh, really lucky, and I, I don't know, breakthrough, but that was why this, uh, many people got in contact with my music. Yeah. So so now you're one of the more uh, established composers, I think, in, 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 in this world. Um, but you, you, you already said some, some things about how things were much more maybe uh, um, open in, in the past. Yeah. Um, now we have a tendency to say that in the past everything was better, but no. well, we we, no, we 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 are still better maybe often in the past. I hope. Um, how 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 is if 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 there are young composers right now, uh, um, in your who are wanting to step in your footsteps? I mean, what are, what are you giving them? advice um, i i think i give a lot to young composers but it's not about that i tell them how to work you know that I, as a conductor i work a lot with young composers and i really try to encourage them to be feel as free as possible and to just try out things you know as a conductor I can do things for well, as a composer I can't do because you can never compose everything what you're interested in. But I have a lot of interest in lots of things. I think it's really great with young composers to let them be utopian and find new solutions for whatever it is. And I think this is just a, a great process. I think uh, they're completely like this. Times are good for young composers right now. Okay. Because there are so many... Uh, so many new ensembles, like uh, all the time, so many great young musicians, uh, which uh, just come, the orchestras are much better concerning contemporary music than uh, 25 years ago, that because of all the young musicians that come from Lucerne Academy or some modern academy or wherever, that they're just uh, are completely great educated to play contemporary music. And I think... Uh, the situation is not that bad for sure. The financial situation is always, always has always been bad. But like, uh, for example, in the sixties, like Ligeti, uh, Lachenmann, they had so many fights in the orchestras. You can't imagine. And now, I, wherever I come, the orchestras 
uh, it's just nice. They're just really, they just do it. They really, you know, absolutely are very good, good people. And that is, is really good. Mm -hmm. And then also the, the, there's the, the, the political context of, 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 of your work. I mean, modern music is not... I think above on the on the wish list of the more right wing conservative uh, uh, politicians. Is uh, do you find anything changing in that in that that, that uh, aspect? Um, yeah, we have always to fight for the freedom of art for sure. That I think is really very important. You know that you know, wherever like uh, dictat uh, dictatorship, uh, you know you have no free art anymore. What changed it is that lots of artists themselves, like younger artists or like in the visual arts, there's much more than in the music scene. They uh, deny this idea of freedom, like of autonomy of art, because there is like the idea that music and art has always to have a message or to help or to be political or whatever. I think it is already political to be free and to just uh, be like really fight for that, that the art is not there to do something else. So just to, mm -hmm. to fight for the autonomy is an absolute political thing because the freedom in the art is kind of a, a, the freedom in the world. Like it is a total democratic thing. Uh -huh. So, because th that's an interesting aspect, because you say that, that there's a, some sort of pressure to be more politically engaged in, yeah. in, in, in your work. Uh, do you meet any any of those? Uh, uh, does it bother you <laughs> in, well, in your work? No, no, um, I, do, I uh, meet these people for sure. And as a, as a performer, I do lots of things and it interests me. It's not, I don't say... That is, it's better or worse, you know. But I think it's just uh, important that we don't mix things up. So I think that if there is a political message in a piece, it will be much clearer if the art is better. You know, if the art is not good, it does not help the message. I think very easy. So that's what mm. I that's what I tell sometimes the young composers. So I think it's really important not to forget that that the art itself has to be really interesting. Otherwise, you lose the interest for your message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now there, there, there's another thing which which occurred to me when I was listening to your uh, music. Uh, some other piece. Uh, I don't because I have to switch computers for this. Yeah. I don't have it now available. Um, but I heard uh, some kind of notes. I mean, uh, I, I'm more of a, uh, I I've, was educated in pop, popular music and I, I'm, I'm a big fan of all kinds of uh, uh, more, more popular music. Also David Bowie. And I, I had some things that, that he made his last album with Maria Schneider, which is a, a modern jazz improvised mm -hmm. music person. And I, I, I thought, has she listened to you? <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the I I, th I saw some 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 kind sort of a bridge between the music you make, with if all these small tonalities and and and, and rhythm changes and 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 that it's sipping sipping through to 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 popular music. Do you uh, have you noticed anything of that happening? Um, I don't know exactly, but I think there are people influencing each other in a very strange way. I think I'm influenced by lots of things, but I don't quote anything. So, for example, there was a Turkish composer who told me that my music reminds him totally to Turkish music. And I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. And you, you now say it reminds me to David Bowie and others say that reminds me to a piece of Stockhausen or whatever. You know, I think this is just interesting because if you can find different things, I, tr I try not to be eclectic. I want to be myself. But at the same time, I try to make the pieces as different as possible. So I really not, I'm not interested in, in repeating myself. I really try to have all the pieces very different. And um, so for sure, there are always inf things influencing me and they fly, the music flies around and comes, comes from somewhere. 
If I influenced uh, David Bowie, I have no idea. <laughs> so I, uh, you, uh, you might know this better, so I didn't meet him. No, no, no I, I don't know if, if anything. Uh, well, I, I find it just very interesting because I'm, I'm I'm quite new to contemporary music and I'm exploring this world, which I find uh, all the more interesting uh, uh, the longer I, I spend in it. So that that's my personal journey. Um. For, for for you, I mean, uh, you're now uh, in your fifties, I think, if, uh, yeah. if I quote your 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 birth date right. Um, uh, uh, where where what's next for you after the ten drum sets? I mean, uh, something completely different. I think I will write some pieces with voices. So with mm. different voices, I think there are different possibilities, which is different people, different, completely different ways of singing, uh, some solo stuff and uh, some smaller pieces. I, I wrote right now several really very long pieces. This uh, The black last, last one for nine synthesizers was also one hour long. Uh, Prozession had been played in... I think in November music, and that's also one hour long. I had all these long, long pieces. I'm interested in short pieces right now, and I think that's very important to just switch. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, I, I think the the people who might have been getting interested in your work by this talk uh, will be flocking <laughs> to to uh, the boss for November music. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I'm 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 also very interested in how it will sound live because I yeah. think that this is music to be experienced live. I think absolutely uh, it doesn't work. So I think in the future when we really do a good post production, maybe this might be possible, but never on YouTube where everything is so much compressed. I think yeah. it's, I think it's really interesting about this uh, the piece is that there's so much dynamics. And it's just like the super high range of dynamics that you have never in pop music because it's always like uh, the sound is compressed. And we, I try to have the biggest dynamic range possible. And that makes it much more difficult to record for sure. Yeah, yeah but that's, also, uh, that's an interesting part we can still uh, focus on. I mean, because on Spotify, there there is now this, this uh, discussion going on that music has become more compressed, uh, yeah. that, that, that the dynamics have, have gone out of it, and that when you have a sound profile of a, of a yeah. more modern piece of music, it's almost completely flat. Yeah, yeah, good um, and, and, and but, but there was also a counter movement now that, that because of, of the new way streaming works, that, that maybe the dynamics would come back even, even bigger than they used to be. How, how, how do you... Uh, um, Confident. Because because people use they they don't only have the, the, these beats going on in their life, but they they want binaural beats and and things. Yeah. Uh, I uh, think things. I think technically things might get better. So for sure that MP3 you just can't get everything. You know, that as long as you're in this uh, in this uh, in the world of MP3, some things just will not work. But um, I think there are technical solutions which make this sound even better. I hope that, uh, you know, that in pop music, traditionally, there is no not much dynamic. It's just optimized for in car, you know, music on the motorway. So mm -hmm. it still works. Or while you're hoovering your living room, you can still, you know, you have one level and you just put it on. And there's always like... Classical music uh, in radio, for example, has lots of problems because it's not that comp that much compressed. So it sounds always a little bit like behind and a bit weak and a bit cheesy or I don't know, not that interesting because it doesn't, it's not that has not the punch. And I'm not sure how to solve it. It's not really not the solution to put everything, and put a punch on everything. So you really get that. That's, but well, I don't know. You you will see what what will happen in the future. Yeah. Well, before that, we'll all go and uh, experience your music live, uh, especially in Dumbos uh, <laughs> coming Tuesday, uh, coming festival. Uh, I don't know the date, but we will mention it uh, afterwards. Um, so thank you very much, Anno Popper, and uh, well, uh, have, have have a great time in the Netherlands. Yeah, I will have have that. Thank you very much for inv inviting me. Thank you. Thank also. You. Okay, bye. bye. 
Wist je dat al meer dan 400 professionals en kunstliefhebbers lid zijn van Cultuurpers? Word ook lid via nieuwsbrief.cultuurpers.nl en geef je support aan onafhankelijke journalisten met een hart voor de kunst.